So um, something crossed my desk this morning about um, yet another sort of AI demo that turns out to be fake. And this time it was the Sora video, this airhead uh, thing that was done. And it turns out that they used AI output as input and did a bunch of post-production uh, on top of the generated uh, content. And what's interesting to me is like, if the pitch was, oh, well, you can just, you know, generate this stuff as raw material and then you can chop it up and, you know, maybe it'll be useful to you. I don't know. Like if that was the pitch, then, you know, that would be sensible. Um, but the sort of argument is like, oh, it's just, it's just going to replace you. It's just, you just tell it what you want and, uh, and it'll make it for you. Voila. And that seems to be sort of the trend, um, pertaining to just AI stuff in general. And I, it's something I've been meaning to write, but it's, has been kind of poorly formed or I just haven't really had the time to sort of sit down and get it out. Uh, this fundamental schism of computers, like what is the social role of the computer? And the question is, is it a tool or is it a slave? And the implications are really kind of important about that. Um, so, you know, like this is a tool. And if you don't use the tool correctly, you're, you're, you are going to incur consequences. And so you have to uh, concentrate, you have to focus on the use of the tool, and there's, if it messes up somehow, or you mess up somehow, there's really nobody to blame but yourself. Uh, whereas a slave is another entity, and you don't want to, the whole point of it is you don't want to have to think, you just get, you know, you just get results. And you know, it's the whole sort of you know, point of, uh, of, of having somebody to order around is, is, is you don't have to think. They're doing the thinking. And, um, you know, when you look back, you know, at the uh, 50s and 60s, the 60s mainly, you see this sort of schism arise uh, between, uh, you know, what is the, the role of the computer? And you've got people like J.C.R. Licklider and Douglas Engelbart on one side who are like the, the computer should be a tool uh, that makes people smart. And then you have people like uh, uh, Marvin Minsky and John McCarthy who are like, oh, the computer should be a smart autonomous agent that uh, we can boss around. And um, you know, when you see uh, you know, stuff like the Jetsons and uh, Rosie the Robot and everybody in the future has their wisecracking uh, 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 robot servant that does all the cooking and cleaning, and there's a you know historical precedent for that, which is that once upon a time you know only rich people could afford a sofa, um, but now everybody can have a sofa. It's not going to be a Chippendale. This is a Alan Cooperism, um, but it uh, you know it, it'll be something decent. And so you know mass production sort of democratizes access to things that only rich people once had. And I think that's a lot of the appeal behind artificial intelligence. And I mean that's sort of like why people like Emily Bender and others call AI a marketing term because it really is. The appeal is really about uh, uh, how can I get my servant that uh, is at my beck and call and you know you see this is Siri and Alexa and uh, you know of course they're all uh, they've all got feminine names but uh, you know so it's almost like you know a mommy can do my laundry for me or something like that and I think that really is sort of the, the the basis for it. And I mean, Licklider himself was, you know, keen on, you know, what was called at the time artificial intelligence. We would call it like GeoFAI, GoFi right now, uh, good old fashioned AI. Uh, you know, he, you know, is, is on record saying, well, wouldn't it be great to have something interpreting, you know, your, your commands, but it was always in this sort of like tool context. But uh, yeah, I mean, I think this sort of idea that like this thing is, it's just going to be this all-knowing, and you, you see these sort of fantasy pieces too. It's like, oh, I'm gonna, I can just watch anything that I want. If I wanted to have a movie about, you know, this or that with these people in it, blah blah blah, and it's going to be great. It's like, who, like, who cares? Um, but it's or the 
the uh, you know the sort of surveillance uh, stuff where it's like oh you know you can just like walk into a building and the door opens for you. It's like, yeah, because like, you know, you can't afford a, a, just a human concierge who recognizes you and opens the door for you. So you're going to want to have this uh, uh, level of pampering. And it really, I think the sort of, that's the sort of fundamental motivation behind uh, a lot of this marketing around an in, inherent marketing term, which is artificial intelligence. Anyway, I'm going to finish my coffee.